The coolest new feature on the Wacom One is how it works with Android. Today, I'm breaking that down. What hardware do you need? What apps work with it? And how well does it work? Let's check it out. I'm still working on a full review of the Wacom One. That's gonna be ready next week. I headed out to CES and then I decided to stay in town for a couple days to see the mountains and go to some of the national parks. I've never really been out west before. It was pretty cool. But you're not here for vacation pictures. We're here to talk about what I think is the coolest new feature added to this thing, this ability to hook it up to an Android phone or an Android tablet and use it that way. Whenever I start writing a review, what I do is I sit down with it and I just start taking notes. And whenever something new or interesting jumps out to me, that tends to be where my notes go. And the next thing I knew is I had almost three pages of notes on this thing. And so I thought, you know, I should just break out the Android section and just kind of give my early impressions on that while I'm working on the full review. So first, the Wacom One is a pen display. This is a monitor that you connect to your computer and it won't work without a computer. So at first, it doesn't look that different than a dozen other pen displays that are out there until you get a better look at it. And that's obviously what we're talking about today, the ability to hook it up to an Android phone or tablet, because that's where this gets interesting. There isn't a lot of documentation out there as to how to do it. In fact, when I opened up the box, went to Wacom's start page, there was nothing on this. And I knew it was a feature because it was in the press release, but I really had to dig in. So that's part of what this video is for. So here is your unofficial setup guide. Here's a couple things you need. The Wacom Wacom One pen display, a compatible Android phone or tablet, an adapter to connect them together, a bobblehead dog, optional. Wacom does have a list of compatible devices on their website. Most of them are Galaxy Note phones and some Huawei devices. More on that in a minute. Once you have your device, you're going to need to connect your display to it. That requires an adapter that does not come in the box. The Wacom One comes with a couple connection cords. The main cord is a bit of a monster. One end goes into the display, that's a USB-C connector. And on the other side of that USB-C connector is an HDMI connector, a USB-A connector, and another outlet connects to the power cord. So I mentioned it needs another adapter that doesn't come in the box. You need something that has an HDMI port, a standard USB input, and then an output that will connect to your phone. Usually it's a USB-C connection. My adapter hub is more than you need, but if you want to get this one specifically, I'll link that up down below in the description. Wacom also has a list of adapters that will work as well. So your setup looks a little something like this. If you're using a Samsung device like I am, Dex just takes over like magic. If you've never used Dex before, it's a pretty cool idea. It takes Android and turns it into a desktop interface, not that different than say Chrome OS or Windows. Now you can control your phone using the Wacom One and the included pen. The Wacom One is not a touch screen, so you are going to have to use the pen. It works fine with the pen, but I'll admit, I really wish there was a touch screen here. I kept touching the screen only to realize it doesn't work that way. Years of eye-hand coordination using phones and tablets is hard to unwire. All right, so now that we have the unofficial connection guide out of the way, let's dive into how this thing works. And how does it work? As a drawing tablet, it is fantastic. Let's take a look. All right, so how does this work? The first thing you should know is that some apps don't. I'm gonna double click on Autodesk Sketchbook and it tells me down here that Sketchbook can't run. So not every drawing app is available. A lot of them are. For example, uh, Medibang Paint works pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new canvas. Ah, there's an ad. Hold on a sec. There we go. Now, one thing that I have set up here is there is an option down below to turn your phone into a touchpad because that's something you're totally going to miss. If you're drawing on a tablet or you're drawing on a phone, you're going to be able to pinch and zoom. And, and most of these apps are built for you to do those kind of touch gestures and you're totally going to miss them. And so that's something that I wanted to do definitely on my phone here while I'm drawing. So uh, obviously pressure works really well. If I press lightly, I get a light stroke. If I press hard, I get, you know, dark strokes. So that's really nice. Most of these apps work pretty well. Let's go ahead and see if we can use our touchpad here to zoom in. So you can see it's it feels a little off. And I think part of that is getting used to pinching and zooming over here or panning around. Okay, that didn't pan. Pan around. Okay, I can't pan around. Maybe I need to pinch and zoom. So I'm getting some false positives in that sort of thing. It's okay, but it's not the best user experience. Just for fun, I'm just gonna open up Artflow, which is another app. 
uh, that works pretty well here. And this time I'm just going to grab a pencil brush and I'm going to do what I normally do, which is I usually start with a pencil and I might start, you know, with my pencil and I'll start shading and I'll just do something really simple so you don't have to watch me draw for 20 minutes here. Um, give it this guy like a huge nose like I usually do, maybe a creepy mouth, some eyebrows, and we're good. And then I can create another layer really easily here. I'm gonna jump over, maybe use a different brush like a pen. Let me grab a pen really quickly. And then on this new layer, I can come in here and I could start drawing uh, with this pen. And, you know, honestly, the drawing experience is really nice. I'm used to drawing on a phone, which is a very, you know, small screen. So having a larger screen is a really nice touch. I think it works really well and uh, surprisingly well, considering, you know, this is all running off a phone. The one thing that bothers me a little bit on the drawing apps is since you don't have touch, it's hard to bring up your tools from the bottom of the screen. So I find myself having to use the pen to bring them up, which of course, you know, adds a line to your drawing. So you're constantly undoing. So if you want to exit an app, you have to add a line. Whoops, another line. And oh, come on, man. And then I could exit my app. Oh, I'm so used to touch. Here we go. Now I could exit my app. But that's another thing is it's, I'm so conditioned to being able to touch my Android screen and use the apps like that, that as soon as you take away the touch, it's taken me a lot of time to just get used to that. But uh, I love what's going on here. The main thing I miss by far is that touch screen. While we're here, I want to try a couple other things. For example, I've got some other Android devices lying around. So I'm going to plug those in and we're going to see how they do. The next thing I want to try out is this. This is the Galaxy Tab S6. This is Samsung's latest tablet. Let's see if this works. I have tested it before, so spoilers, it does. All right, let me toggle on Samsung Dex here and see what happens. There we go, it's working. So what's kind of cool here is that the Wacom One and this tablet over here are using the same Wacom pen technology. So this pen is gonna work on both of these. This time I'm gonna open up Ibez Paint X. I'm gonna open up a document and I'm just gonna start drawing in here. And this has some really nice pen tools to it. Uh, you can see that when I press very lightly, I get very light lines. I add a little pressure, I can get really dark lines. That's something I really love about Ibez. It's got some really nice pressure flow, especially, you know, for a mobile app, it's really fluid. So the reason I plugged this in is the S6 is not on the list of devices Wacom says are, are really built to use with the one. However, it does work with it. So just kind of keep that in mind. I'm not sure how complete it is. I think maybe the reason they didn't include it on the list is because why would you plug this into a tablet if I could just, you know, boot anything up here and use my pen with it here, right? Why would you plug it into something without touch capability? So that's probably the reason it's not on the list, but it does work with it. Here we go, here we go. We've got one more device to check out. This is the Google Pixel 3 XL. Uh, this is last year's uh, Google Pixel phone. I'm just gonna plug this in and show you guys what happens here. This is also not on the device list. Google, go away! Anyway, uh, spoiler alert here. Uh, this is obviously not on the device list and it's not gonna work with this. So this is what I found when I plugged in something that just doesn't have DeX or doesn't have any way to interface with this thing. So right now, the number of devices that this is gonna work with is, is pretty limited. And also I noticed on that list, most of those devices are, are flagship devices, more expensive devices. So I love the idea of what this can do, hooking up to an Android phone. I hope in the future, it dramatically expands the number of phones this is gonna work with because I love the idea that your phone becomes your primary art device. You could take it with you. You could do all sorts of different things with it. I, I love the idea. I love where Wacom's going with this and I'm really excited to see where this goes in the next two or three years. Hopefully we see more support for it because it is a great pen. It is a great idea and is a pretty exciting concept. So with those tests out of the way, I want to thank you guys for watching the video today. As always, if you have any comments or questions, let me know down below in the comment section. That's all I have and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.